Hello, my name is George Leonardos. I'm a fly fisher, a fly tire, and a bamboo rod maker. The video you are about to see is a step-by-step -step documentation of how I build a bamboo fly rod. This video is a documentation of the most recent fly rod that I've made. It is an eight-foot, six-weight fly rod, which I will use predominantly for uh, trout fishing. Well, I wish you luck in your own journey of making your own fly rod, and have fun fishing it. Good luck fishing it, and thank you very much for viewing this video. The bamboo used in making fly rods is Tonkin cane. It comes in 12 foot long sticks and you're looking at the bottom of the stick now. And you will see starting at the bottom you can see the uh, nodes about every foot or so. And as you get closer to the top of the uh, column, the nodes get further and further away. If you're going to make a two-piece fly rod, you will need to cut this column at about the middle, which you see has already been done here. Use a fine tooth saw for doing that to minimize the tear out. Once you've cut it in half, mark the two sections so that you know which is the bottom half and which is the top half. Because the bottom half of the comb will be used for the butt section of the rod and the top half of the comb will be used for the tip section of the rod. Here you see how I have marked the uh, two sections of the comb. I've marked the end of the combs with a felt tip pen. The uh, butt section I've marked with a black felt tip pen. And the tip section or the top section I've marked with a red felt tip pen. You will note that I put the markings on the end of the sections closest to the uh, bottom of the plant so that I can keep all the strips properly oriented as I manufacture the rod. We are now going to split the comb into the strips that we will need to make our rod. You will notice that as the bamboo dries, it will naturally split in several places. I will use those natural splits to begin the splitting of my comb. To split the comb, I will use a fro. However, any thick knife blade that's long enough to reach through the comb will be sufficient for splitting the comb. And here's the procedure. I will keep the, the fro going through the center of the comb. After splitting the, uh, the comb in half lengthwise, I use a carving gouge to remove the internal membrane at the uh, nodes. I keep on splitting the comb in half 
until I get eight strips out of uh, half of the comb. Uh, but before I start splitting, I mark the center point along the length of the comb to make sure that my split uh, isn't half the full length of this uh, comb. And here's how I do that. I take a flexible measure, flexible tape like this, and mark the center. At, I mark the center at uh, every node. I then mark a line connecting all these center points the full length of this uh, half comb. This way I can be assured that as I'm splitting this that the split follows the line. If it starts to weave off the line then I can make adjustments. I start the split with these nippers to make sure that it starts exactly where I want it, right in the middle. After attaching my fro to my bench vise, then I insert the fro in the split that I started with those pinchers, pliers and push. Once I have uh, completed stripping the columns into the uh, number of strips to their uh, final width here, at this stage, I check over each of them for any blemishes that may necessitate disregarding those strips. Fortunately, it appears that all these strips will be usable. The kinds of blemishes that might cause me to disregard them would be such items as leaf nodes or the strip not stripping properly, uh, being too thin for example. And these look all pretty good. You'll notice that I have rearranged all these strips in the original order that they were in the column. And I will pick six consecutive strips to use in this section of the rod. And the strips that I have before me now are strips that will be used for the uh, butt end of the rod. So I will select these six strips to use. Once I have done that, now that we've cut the strips to length, we've squared off the sides, the next step in preparing our strips is to straighten them out and smooth the enamel side of the nodes. You will note that there is a bump right where the node is and we will start to smooth this side of the strip by first filing away this bump with just a standard metal file. You want to be careful not to go too deep with the filing because you do not want to destroy any of the power fibers. and keep on filling so you can gauge how far you've gone.
you should continue until you no longer feel a, a bump there. And you can use your fingernail to determine when the bump has completely disappeared because if any it still exists there your fingernail will hang up there. I've now turned the ferrule ends of both sections to the final dimension so that we have a snug fit between the ferrule and the rod section. We will glue the ferrule onto the rod using this glue. We will apply the glue to the rod and put a small dab in the ferrule. There are six serrations on the ferrule end that rides over the rod and those serrations will be lined up with the six angled edges of the rod. Okay, I'm going to apply the glue to the uh, rod at this point. I want to make sure I have complete coverage. I will wipe the excess glue off. And I will push to make sure that the ferrule is fully seated. While also making sure that the serrations on the ferrule are lined up with the points along the rod. And now I will tightly wrap the end of the ferrule with some twine. make sure I get a good bond on the serrated, serrated sections. <laughs> 